Hi everyone! Today we are painting a fern. We're painting it from start to finish and the fern I've chosen today is aptly called the painted fern. There are about 20,000 types I could choose from but this particular project is going to be the perfect next step from trying those really simple leaf shapes so we're going to be using that simple tapered line and looking at some lovely colour blending. So get your kit and let's get started. Okay, so we've got our kit ready and we need a pencil to start off and I'm just going to draw a sort of wobbly curve of a line, really nice and faint as always, but then we're going to draw out some branches and these branches are going to get it's a little bit shorter, a little bit more curved upwards and just the tiniest bit sort of closer together as well. So today we're doing a painted fern, um, which is actually the name of the species. I might do, I'm just gonna do some shorter ones there as well, cause that's quite nice. And I've done it so faint that I don't actually need to rub it out, but this putty rubber would be a very handy rub out to get it really nice and faint for you if you're drawing naturally hard which I know I used to do that at school a lot anyway so we've got our skeleton of the fern here now the painted fern the reason it's called so is you have a darker colored stem like a, a sort of browny blue or almost like a purpley color and then the fronds are almost um, sort of watercolour painted, the colour blends out into a lovely green. So it just seemed like a really good one to do with watercolour. So today I've got a size six brush that I'll be using at some point and a size two, uh, rounded point as always. And then I will also include my uh, two tenths of a zero brush because there is going to be some fiddly work going on at some point. Now in my palette I've kept the uh, series of greens and blues and browns that I had in there from my original simple leaf shapes um, because again it's exactly what we need to use here. Bit of kitchen roll to blot it out. So let's get started shall we? Uh, first off I need to mix my colours and that's more the reason why I've got my, um, my largest brush here because it's just really good for mixing colours. So I'm going to get my sap green there we go, sap green mixed up and then I'm going to add in a bit of French ultramarine. Okay, really nice. And then I'm going to add in a little bit of burnt umber as well. Just because I really want to get a sort of uh, kind of dull stem colour that's quite dark and then I'm just going to have a little bit of the sap green ready to go here. So this is going to be our leaf mix, our fern fronds and this is going to be our stem mix. So I'm just getting that mixed up even though it's uh, it's not like a mix as such because it's just a single colour I do want to have it really nice and dilute and ready to go so it's just quite sensible to do that okay so I'm going to start with my size 2 brush and I am going to begin with the stem so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way up now with all botanical painting you always start with your stem because it is the backbone, it's the anchoring place of the piece uh, and you know everything comes from there. So what we would never do is we just sort of without even doing any kind of skeleton structure you just start painting a branch and not have it anchored to anything. So I'm going to work up in sections and show you a really nice uh, sort of blended wet technique for this painted fern, okay? So with my size two brush, I'm just gonna start that first bit of stem and then I'm gonna get a little bit of more concentrated mix and just dab it at the bottom. There's a lot of blending with the painted fern. So let's go, we're gonna go down the branch 
and I'm using a really wet version here and then I'm gonna paint some little branches that come off and I'm gonna just elongate that and do two more and this is really really wet color and then I'm gonna get a little bit more concentrated color here and just dab it down that branch because what we want is we want a lot of color sort of laying in wait <laughs> for the green that's going to come along here right now with I think I'm going to use my smaller brush here just because we're working on our first little one and I'm just going to dab the brush a little bit of that green it's so delicate though that green we can barely really see it and I'm just working my way up along the branch making basically a mini fern aren't I just with little tapered lines along the wetness little tapered lines that get angled towards the end of the stem and just get a little bit shorter and a little bit finer as we go and it's all really wet at this point and you can see how the colour from the blue stem has progressed up through the little branches. Now we are going to repeat this on the other side. Now as a left-hander I could not have picked a worse place to start um, but when I'm because of course I've got to get my hand kind of over the top of this but when I'm teaching I just find it much easier to start in this bottom left hand corner don't ask me why funny kind of psychology of feeling sort of secure in your in your painting and also I just really enjoy painting from this side okay there we go we can still see the color is blending really nicely so I'm using such a dilute version of the color here and you can barely see it at this point but I promise you when we come to seeing it all dried up you'll start to see beautiful papery edges now the end of each branch is going to sort of create its own little fern miniature of its own just to taper into the edge and I will just drop a tiny bit of colour there. Okay, so we're going to move our way further up the stem. I'm going to use my larger brush again. And over we go. Lots of water and then I'll just get a little bit more colour in. A little bit more colour. Lovely. Okay, and then watery branches. Now, this is a really interesting point that we don't want those branches to get too close up to the previous branch we've painted. So that's why we go nice and methodically. So I'm just using water here. I don't need any more color because all the color is coming from the pigment that's already on the page. Lovely. And this time I'm going to stick with my size 2 brush and start to paint in my little ferny fronds. And you can see that even though it seemed like these were all pretty spaced out from each other, as soon as you start to paint in the branches, actually you see how much space they do all take up and how they need to be quite spaced out when you draw those initial branches so they're not all getting in each other's way. Now the beauty of working with really wet colour the whole time is even though these branches have sort of largely dried up, some of these ones towards the end, we can just kind of wake them up again with our wet brush. There we go, like I'm doing now. 
Um, I'm using a, a rough uh, cold pressed paper today, which has got even more texture to it, um, just as a way of experimenting. And also um, the, the sort of chunkier, I suppose, the, the knot in the paper. So the knot is another word for the amount of texture there is going on there. Um, means that you just get an even smoother blend. Now I'm just going to drop in a little bit more colour there just because it's fun to watch it travel up those branches and that is what makes the painted fern so recognisable. The painted fern is often the Japanese painted fern where you get them in the most incredible silvery colours and that's why there's a lot of blue going on today. So lots of water and the cool thing is even though this is very repetitive and seemingly rather simple um, the repetition of doing this um, builds up and builds up until you've got a sort of fairly mesmerizing pattern going on with these ferns and it just looks so beautiful once you're finished. So I've just elongated that end branch. We've got a little one there, which I'm just going to sort of bibble about with my brush a bit. And then the last one, doing my little lines, my little dabs with the brush, and then just a little bit of color. Lovely. And we'll just get a little bit of color in there. So you can see the one below here now has dried and we're starting to get those beautiful crisp edges, which is very, very satisfying. Okay, so let's keep going, working our way up the stem, just being careful not to stick your hand in what you've already painted. Lots of water, not too much color and the fronds and the little branches they grow at parallel points so you see they are sticking out at the same point they're not growing at sort of alternate points and the same can be said for the branches of the fern itself so you'll see each one is growing at a parallel point so let's go again I think ferns were the first bit of sort of foliage or botanical painting, I guess, that I became really obsessed with in my early days of being a watercolour artist. Because they were just so mesmerising and I, I loved the way that you'd, you'd look at a fern and then you'd look at little branches and realise all they were was just miniature versions of the main fern. So a bit like one of those optical illusions that just keeps on the same thing, gets smaller and smaller and smaller and repeats itself. That is what I saw in painting a fern. So all I'm using is a simple little line to create these shapes, but the, the key thing is is that these lines are angled towards the end of their central branch and that they get a little bit shorter and shorter as they sort of shrink right down to the final tip. And that we're just using lots of water, not too much color. So then I can come along with a little bit more of my branch mix and just send some color racing up the center. And I've done my, um, my main stem branch fairly straight. Um, when we were doing the really simple fern in the simple smooth sided leaf episode a few episodes ago, I was talking about if you, if you drew your stem on a curve, then it was really important that you painted the underside first and what I mean by that is if your stem is curving over that you paint this side first because those branches are going to have less space and be more cramped in whereas right now here you could just choose whichever you preferred 
any sensible person who was a left-hander in this case like me would have gone for the other side would have painted this side first but as I said I just like painting this side first and I don't really know what to do about that <laughs> as I said I think being self-taught sometimes just makes you a little bit of a well I'd like to think it used to make me like a really instinctive painter but I think it's totally counterintuitive that I want to paint that side first anyway we're getting there so now we just turn the end of that branch into one little fern and what it means is you can see how the branch itself is turning into a mini fern that's a mini version of that we've always got a big fern little fern smallest fern so I love that repetition we'll get a little bit more color in there just dab it in don't worry about pushing it about too much it will travel I promise lovely Get a little bit more in there. Fantastic, okay. So let's keep going. So we're just carrying on. Nearly at the end. And you can see that once you've got quite a few of these ferns in place you see how they sort of dovetail into each other when you're when you're painting them so they can sort of tuck in between each other but you really do fill up your area even when it looked like at first that these branches were all fairly far apart from each other so let me see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the end. One, two, three, four, five. So it's amazing how when you start drawing them, you think, oh yeah, I've done as many as I need to. And then you find that you want to add more as you go through. So I like being able to now really sort of paint these right up so they're nearly touching, but not quite. And we really don't need much on the brush because there is a load of colour already on the page and the water is just allowing that colour to travel along these branches. So don't get too hung up with adding lots of colour. You just want to keep adding water and that's why it's good that I've got this really really wet dilute green mix already mixed up because I'm able to work quite fast. Um, when you're doing work like this where it's all about blends okay so I'm now going to add I think I'm just going to add one and the end one there I don't personally think unless we were painting an anatomically correct fern like a, a for a, for the sake of a botanical study um, well in that case I'd have the real thing in front of me but I'm not going to fret that we haven't got the exact same number branches on each side there we go yeah so as I was saying working fast because of the, the sort of the general blend that we've got so let's send a bit of color up send a bit of color up let's get a little bit more color on that brush there we go there we are lovely okay we're still going I've left the top as well because we're going to have a little look at that. So I've gotten into this rhythm and it feels like you do the branches in the size two brush and your little, <clears throat> your little fronds here and then it's much easier to go and paint a little one extra there than to paint your <clears throat> little green leaves 
with that two tenths brush. You can get brushes that go down to almost a single hair, it's crazy. Um, and I must say, when you're working on particularly textured paper like this, using the really small brushes does actually prove a bit of a challenge because there isn't a lot of weight there on the bristles to travel across the page without sort of being disrupted by the bumpiness of the paper. So you're always having to weigh up pros and cons of your equipment with watercolour. Either you get sort of a gorgeous, gorgeous smooth blend with a, with a really sort of thick knotty paper like the one I'm using at the moment but you struggle if you're doing really small detail whereas if you used a smoother paper I mean all the way to a hot pressed smooth paper that's when it's completely smooth um, yes you're able to do all sorts of lovely detail but the blending is quite weird if I'm totally honest well we'll look at that at some point but it's it's not the sort of classic watercolour blend that sort of seeps into the paper and is all satisfying and gorgeous. It's almost more like it sits up on top of the paper. Anyway, that's for another time. A little bit more of that blue and just a little bit more. I'm, I'm enjoying putting just a little dab of more concentrated blue in there. Okay, so that's looking really, really nice. We've got a lovely sort of round shape, especially from adding those two in. And it's quite cool to, at this point to just look at the difference between that looks like a bit of a wet, messy blob and look how beautiful and crisp it becomes. And also some little favorite moments here, this little bit of blue blending up into the green. It's all because we're using lots and lots of water. Okay, let's look at the top. So I'm gonna keep with the sort of two tenths brush, even to do the branches here because we are getting now really quite slender and I had drawn those two so we'll put those in but now so I'll bring it down a fraction so we can see so it's we're still probably going to have yeah a few little branches twist that off in that direction let's get the little dabs in And we're going to treat the top of this fern a bit like how we treat the ends of the branches, that it turns into one mini fern all on its own. Like this one here. And just prolong that, lovely. And a little bit of Gorgeous. I think it's fine to praise your own work, isn't it? <laughs> okay, a few more branches and the one long one. I think the character really comes in these little paintings is when you choose to sort of twist a branch going in a slightly different direction like that one there or that one there. I think um, nature, although it's amazing the patterns and the formations that are very precise it's also about the little twist and a little bit of sort of quirky character that you get when a leaf has maybe been pulled back by the wind or something like that that's what charms me about nature anyway that lovely kind of combination of those two things Okay, and now I'm just going to paint in one last fern itself, so I'm just going to do some little ones, a little bit like our little branches down here. and send a bit of colour up there and a tiny bit of concentrated at the top and that's rather lovely 
So you could leave it there very happily, but I love when it's dried to just come in with a little bit of concentrated shadowy color. So I'm gonna just use the concentrated bit of blue and green and just add a little bit of underside some of those branches. So just a tiny bit of shadow, really not much at all, just to give them the tiniest bit of extra detail. So I'm just doing that with my size two brush. And I'm gonna leave it there. I hope you enjoyed painting that fern. Um, you can look in the garden in the hedgerows and find so many different types, but what we've done there is a perfect uh, starting point for your fern painting. Um, if you like the video, uh, press the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on and what you'd like to see next. And of course, hit subscribe so you don't miss another one. All right, bye.